glad you're with us on the Asset Preservation Hour. With Stuart Willis, I'm Brad Johansson. How are you today? Man, I'm living the dream, ready to rock here. It's my end of year push. Let's go. Can, can I give you a whole list of things to cover today? <laughs> Let's I, go. I, I want to go to Secure Act, stretch IRAs. I want to do Roth and IRA conversion stuff yeah. as we deal with this. I want to do living trusts. And I want to do taxes because we always have to do. Let's start with the Secure Act. And people go, oh, what, what the heck? Why don't you fill us in on yeah. what the heck? Give me an idea yeah. of what the Secure Act is. So the reason the Secure Act is so relevant is the Secure Act was um, it was actually intended to delay required minimum distributions. Right. Okay. From uh, required minimum distributions, if you have an IRA or a 401k or thrift savings plan, you are forced at 70 and a half to have to take minimum distributions. You put away all this money tax deferred, and the government has finally said, "Hey, you know what? At 70 and a half, it's time to start, you know, taking some of that money out." Right. 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 Well. In November of 2019, we went back to go uh, lobby our senators and our congresspeople. We had meetings with uh, Mick Sally's office at the time. Uh, we also met with uh, Kirsten Sinema's staff, who was absolutely on top of it, really smart, really knew the state really, really well. Uh, met with uh, Debbie Lesko's staff out in the West Valley. Um, we met with uh, Dave Schweikert in Scottsdale and Andy Biggs out in uh, his staff out in in uh, Chandler, Gilbert area. And um, what we were trying to do was just delay required minimum distributions. And there were a few kind of options, payment options as well. But what we got was a whole different thing. Yes, we got RMDs delayed. In the first SECURE Act, they were able to delay RMDs until 72 years old. But what we also got was something we didn't want, and that was essentially the elimination of the stretch IRA. And here's why that matters. Here's why the SECURE Act okay. matters, is that in the past, when a person passed away, if they had a big IRA or even a small one, they could pass it to their heirs, their non-spouse beneficiaries, so their mm -hmm. kids, their girlfriends, their boyfriends, whatever, and they could pass it over their lifetimes to those people. They could drip it out over time. Okay. And so, of course, when you drip it out over time, taxes are lower, et cetera. Well, what the SECURE Act did is it killed the stretch IRA. So you can't do it over their lifetimes now. You have to now have it all out within 10 years. So that compresses the amount of time that people have to take it. So let's just use the number of a million dollars, right? With a million dollars, if you were having to take a 5% distribution a year starting at, you know, 4 or 5% and you had to stretch it out of your lifetime, that's $50,000 a year. If you now have to take it within 10 years, that's now right around 100,000 a year. So what it does is it essentially it pushes your kids, your beneficiaries, your heirs, whatever into much higher brackets. Yeah. So it's a problem because the SECURE Act it was followed up by SECURE Act 2.0, which delayed required minimum distributions to 73, did a few other things with Roth 401k matching and so forth that we can talk about um, later. But the implications of it is that it essentially um, is going to push the kids into these high tax brackets. So any plan you had to efficiently pass money to the kids you know, throw that plan out of the table. It's it's gone. All right. So that deals with taxes as well. And you're always talking yep. taxes. Why is it so important? I mean, beyond the SECURE Act and RMDs, why is it so important to be talking about taxes, especially now in your in your financial planning? Yeah, I listen, as you're nearing retirement or you're in retirement, Tax planning is essential. Yes, we are in the most efficient tax window in history right now. Taxes are at all-time lows. They're, they're scheduled to go up here at the end of 2026 or at 2025 if Congress doesn't act. So we only have three years left. So it's important to have that tax plan, right? You need to think through. Now, when you think about it, as we enter the end of the year, we really want to have advanced tax planning going on where we take a look at what's happened in your year, uh, your year so far. So the reason we don't do tax planning at the beginning of the year for, is for a couple of reasons. But number one is we don't know what's going to happen yet, yes. right? People get bonuses, they get raises, they may sell a house, they may sell a rental property, they may inherit money, things change. At the end of the year, 
it allows us to be able to look back. So right now we can look back on what's happened this year and really take advantage of things. There's things like tax loss harvesting where we can basically maximize your taxes by taking losses intentionally. So if you have 50 stocks in your portfolio, it might make sense to harvest some of those losses. Once again, everybody's situation is different. Everybody's you know, situation is unique. There's no cookie cutter approach to Absolutely. this. Absolutely. It takes a lot of effort. Have, have people heard of tax loss harvesting? Is that a new term for, for many folks? No, I, you know what? I, I think it's a, you know, for people that are advanced, you know, investors, they've generally heard of it. If they haven't, then it's really a problem. You know, a lot of advisors, you know, don't really may not be talking. Yeah, about they, it. They, they don't like to give tax advice. Oftentimes they're prohibited from giving tax advice from their firms. And that's why we're not seeing it. All right. You talk about Roth conversions all of the time as well. Explain the Roth and why why you're so high on it at this point. Yeah, so so the benefit of the Roth is essentially that all of the future earnings and growth in, in principle is all tax free. That's that's the beauty of it. You yes. pay the taxes ahead of time, so you don't have to pay pay it later. And of course, the thought was that you know your income is going to be lower, your taxes are going to be lower in retirement. So take it out later, put your money away tax deferred later. And the, the, the fallacy there, the myth there, is that your taxes are going to be lower. It really may not be that way because even if your brackets are lower, you have lower you know, income because you don't have wages, what a lot of people don't consider is the way that taxes – you know, uh, or I'm sorry, Social Security intervene in there. Uh, because remember, we were always told that Social Security would never be a revenue source for taxation, but it became taxable for the first time in 1983 and more taxable in 1993. Up to 85% of your benefit is taxable as ordinary income. Th this obviously takes us to a point of saying, hmm, I, I may not have thought of some of this stuff. This is a time that I need to come in and maybe take a second look at my portfolio? Yeah, absolutely. Look, if you have a financial plan that nobody's looking at your tax plan, you're missing out. Yeah. I promise you that. You know, um, And what we're offering the audience today is a complimentary portfolio review where we'll take a look. Does it make sense to, to do a Roth conversion? What we're going to do again this week here is the Roth conversion challenge. And what that Roth conversion challenge is, is we're going to take a look at whether it makes sense. Let's put it to rest now and forever. So you won't ever have to deal with the, the question again. Does it make sense to convert your IRA to Roth? So what we'll do is we'll take a look. We'll take a look at your investments. We'll take a look at your taxes. Bring in your taxes when you come in last year's tax return. And we'll create a simulation in there to determine whether a Roth will benefit you or not. And if you allow us to do that complimentary, absolutely free portfolio review that includes our tax analysis, what we're offering you today, and it's only for the first 15 callers or first 15 people to click on that QR code and actually set an appointment, what we're offering is a $50 gift card to Mastro's Steakhouse, okay? All right. Listen, I'm buy Listen at the end of the day, we're not trying to buy clients. What we're trying to do is get you to get off that damn couch and make a decision, okay? Because at the end of the day, I have people that come in all the time. They say, hey, we've been watching your show for years. I say, well, why didn't you call? I don't know. I'm not the kind of person that gets up and calls a, a TV show. At the end of the day, some of the who's who of Arizona is calling that number, and they're seeking help. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask for some help, I, even if you've been independent. If you're in a relationship with an advisor that you don't particularly like and you want to get that second opinion, we'd be glad to give you that second opinion absolutely free. If, if you have statements and investable assets of $250,000 or more, we are offering that $50 gift certificate gift card to Mastro's Steakhouse. Give us a call, 833-602-7526. That's 833-602-PLAN, or click on that QR code. It'll take you to assetpreservation.com. Are you one of those who says, I, I don't even want to get off the couch and call? L look, I understand. Your phone's sitting with you in the couch. You don't even have to get off the couch. <laughs> Pick up your phone and call. It's a $50 gift certificate to Mastro's and a complimentary review of your portfolio. Go ahead. Sit on a couch, but pick up the phone and call. 833-602-7526. We're back after this. You've got quite an extensive resume. 
Wow, so many years of management. I bet that was fun. So this job requires basic knowledge of the social media and video platforms, content creation, and SEO. How proficient are you in those areas? Going back to work after retiring is not ideal. I'm Stuart Willis with Asset Preservation Wealth and Tax. If you have amassed a nest egg, it's time for a financial advisor to help you reach your retirement goals. We are in one of the greatest tax windows in history, so it makes sense to take advantage of this tax discount while you can with your partners in retirement. All of our expert advisors, CPAs, and enrolled agents are fiduciaries that specialize in retirement planning, tax mitigation, estate planning, and more. Plan your retirement right. Call right now for your own complimentary portfolio review and tax analysis. So glad you're with us on Asset Preservation Hour. Stuart Willis is with us. I'm Brad Johansson. And we talk about a lot of things that we see out there. I'm going to talk about stuff what we see online or newspaper ads or, or things that people will see about living trusts. Is it actually important? Is this something we should be looking at or are, are the ads overstated? Well, it's interesting. I mean, like a lot of these ads are, you know, pushing living trusts and some are for good reason, right? Uh, because, you know, we, we have a pretty, you know, sincere agreement with our clients, you know, a commitment that says, if, if a client of ours, something happens to them, I promise to you, I promise to our clients that we'll be there for your surviving spouse, we'll be there for the kids if something happens to you. That's our commitment, right? And look, we've just celebrated our 26th year in business. Congratulations. We're not going anywhere, yeah, that's right? Awesome. We're not going, we're growing. We have offices in Scottsdale, the West Valley, Sun City area. We have our Tempe office, which is where we're filming the TV show That's now. That's right. Right? That's right. But our commitment is we're not going anywhere. We're going to be there for your kids, for your surviving spouse. But you need to have your stuff in order. You, you need to have your affairs in order. Okay? And part of that includes an estate plan. For some people, a simple will make sense. But what the trust does, the point of the trust is essentially to avoid probate. And, and a lot of these online ads are selling you documents. You want to make sure that your documents are done by an attorney, not done by a legal document preparer. I mean, a lot of these places aren't attorneys that do it, and they're boilerplate documents. And I think that that's a problem. Uh, you, the, kind of the cookie cutter thing that you say is out there that people need to avoid. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it can be a big problem for people that are doing that. And I mean, look, there's a few scams out there too. Um, you know, um, in California, I was actually raised in San Diego, California, and in, in the early 90s, there used to be this thing called a living trust mill where people used to sell cheap living trusts uh, and they were just being delivered by insurance agents to try to sell you insurance products on the back end. And we're actually seeing that in Arizona, and no one seems to care, no one seems to say anything about it, no one's doing anything about it. How are they allowing it? Because it, it, It's crazy, because it, it's what we call a pretext interview. It's when you know they sell you a living trust, and you do that to create a trust, but they're gathering all your private financial data to sell you some expensive, unnecessary product. And a lot of those people have moved over into Arizona from there. We're seeing, we see them all over the place. They're advertising on the radio. They're, they're, they're really all over the place. And we just caution you that if it's being delivered by an insurance agent, there's usually something coming. Yeah. Uh, the advice that you would give somebody in living trust, because somebody is saying, I, I've got this. I'm not sure where I need it to go. And I'm not even sure how I'm supposed to prepare a living trust. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of do-it-yourselfer websites and things like that, and, and I think it's important to, to understand this. Look, I am not an attorney. Um, we always have our clients speak with one of our attorneys sure. that, that, that have prepared our trust for us, so um, it's important. And when you do a trust, what is the benefit? The whole purpose is to avoid probate, right? Uh -huh. It's to avoid the process, and probate is not an evil process. It's just expensive and time-consuming. And look, when we set up a living trust, we set it up— um, for we don't make any money on it. it's not a it's not a profit center for our firm we do it because i don't want to hang out with their kids in probate court and i'm telling you i hear all the time about these kids oh my god they're so sweet they don't need my money if you want to see the jerry springer show come to my office during an estate oh, settlement goodness. all these sweet kids that no don't interest. care about money no thanks right no thanks <laughs> right? but but look i think it's important you know important to do this to have a living trust in the, the, i mean it goes through a long list right you're you're dealing with 
the power of attorney. Is there a list that goes beyond what gives you power in creating this living trust? Sure. So when you when we create a, a, a document, an estate plan, what we're first looking at, the main document is the living trust document. Okay. okay. And the purpose of that is to say who's in charge and where does the money go. Gotcha. Okay. That's very basic. And if you have a, a, an estate plan, tax issue, which means, remember, with the tax cuts that are coming in the future, when I say tax cuts, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act is going away at the end of 2025. It's also cutting in half the estate tax threshold. So more people are going to have to pay taxes on their inheritances, up to 47% oh, in some cases. So the trust, in many cases, can double your exemption if you're married. So it's something to think it through. The other thing it includes is a document called the pour over will. What the pour over will does, it says that there are certain things, like for example, your watch, right? You have one of those Apple watches yeah, I see, yeah, right? I do. So if you pass away, there's nowhere to go title the name of that watch. But what your pour over will says is that all of the assets that weren't named in the trust are intended to be named in the trust. So your will gives it to your trust upon your passing. Gotcha. Crucial document that adds some overlap in there. Now, the next document, of course, is the general power of attorney for finance. It's your general durable power of attorney. Once again, you may want to have someone in charge to pay your bills, to take care of all of those needs uh, for you. Who is it that you want in charge? Who do you trust to pay your bills, to make those financial decisions when you can't do it? And look, that's a bit of an overlap with a trust document, Okay. but it's important to have both done because it do, they don't cover all bases. But the general durable power of attorney is part of this estate planning portfolio. And there's other powers of attorneys. And you say a lot of people have been steered towards a do-it-yourself that may not include a lot of what you need in this. Yeah, generally when you see the do-it-yourself trusts, what happens is they say, okay, it's $5.99 for this one, but then they charge $100 for every additional document. And, you know, you want to deal with an attorney, right? right. Because, look, the health care power attorney is another document in our, in our portfolio. And that also includes the living will. But you may have someone different that you want to have handle your health care decisions than handle your financials, right? You may have a son or a daughter that's a nurse or a doctor, and they don't manage money well, but they sure know uh, the medical decisions, yeah. right? And I think that that's the great, you know, idea of having separate documents. Is this something, obviously, that's included if they come in for a free portfolio review? We are not including a living trust in a free portfolio review. But what we are doing ah. is, is, is making an offer to our clients um, in our audience here today. Look, we only do estate planning for our financial clients. Ah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing at the end of the day. The trust that we do for our clients right around $990. It's not a profit center for us, right? We only do that because we want to make sure, once again, we're not going through that probate process. So if you set up a living trust in the past that doesn't do what you think you want it to do, and you're interested in a complimentary portfolio review, we'll include that, that trust review inside our portfolio review at absolutely no cost. And in fact, I'll make an offer I don't usually make if you bring in your portfolio and you have $500,000 more of investable assets and you allow us to do a complimentary portfolio review for you, we will give you the discount on our trust for $990 for a single property in the state of Arizona. We will do a trust for you at $990 if you go through our, wow. our full review process, right? And we'd be glad to help. We usually don't extend that. It's usually only for financial clients. But if you if you come in with those investable assets, five hundred thousand dollars or more, we'd be glad to extend that offer to you to get you off the table to get going. So if you think you need a living trust and a portfolio review, give us a call. 833-602-PLAN. Click on that QR code. It'll take you to assetpreservation.com. We'd be glad to help, but you have to take action. You know you need to get it done. So get it done. It is a rare offer. So now is the time. 833-602-7526. Get that free portfolio review right now. And how do taxes figure into Social Security and more? That's coming up after the break. The market is going to get worse from here. This is the biggest monthly decline in 10 years. People's 401ks took a major hit. Well, my investments are tanking. My retirement isn't going as planned. I can't believe I let my kid talk me into buying crypto. I mean, 
What is that anyway? This was the fourth worst contraction in history. So how are you two doing? Your financial future doesn't have to be uncertain. I'm Stuart Willis with Asset Preservation Wealth and Tax. If you have amassed a nest egg, it's time for a financial advisor to help you reach your retirement goals. We are in one of the greatest tax windows in history, so it makes sense to take advantage of this tax discount while you can with your partners in retirement. All of our expert advisors, CPAs, and enrolled agents are fiduciaries that specialize in retirement planning, tax mitigation, estate planning, and more. Plan your retirement right. Call right now for your own complimentary portfolio review and tax analysis. So glad you joined us on Asset Preservation Hour with Stuart Willis. I'm Brad Johansson, and we, we talk about some of the things that most folks don't talk about. And the, the question usually comes up about Social Security. Why would I ask questions about Social Security? Because the government's telling me what I need to do about Social Security. I'll figure it out when I get there. And if I can do it at 62, I'll do it at 62. Why would it matter that I talk about Social Security and taxes at this point? Why would it matter, Stuart, at this point? Yeah, I can tell you Social Security is maybe the only thing that's least planned than or less planned than taxes in a financial plan because people just take it for granted they decide hey you know what i'm going to file as early as possible there's the concept obviously that social security is going broke it's going to go away so i'm going to file as early as possible and at least collect something and that's a tremendous mistake to do it blindly like that it's I, probably happening now at a record pace that we haven't seen before well you know what i think it is i think it's that that most people really don't understand the magnitude of what they're dealing with right they just think it's this automatic thing and 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 what we're seeing all the time is that when we do an analysis for people we're seeing it, the average couple that comes into our office that has between $750,000 and $2 million of benefit over their actuarial lifetime, over their expected lifetime, right? People don't think about that, right? They want to come in and talk about their $500,000, their million, their $2 million yep. portfolios, but they, they aren't thinking about the Social Security. Why? Because it's automatic to them, and, and they just don't think of it as an asset. And if you think as an audience, if you start looking at it as an audience— you may start understanding the importance of having a social security plan as well. So if most of us are coming in and saying, I'm in a little bit of fear. I watch the way the markets are going. I watch the way the situation is, and it's only going to get worse. So I'm going to need money now. Why don't I just, look, I can do it at 62. I'll do it at 62. And that's, as I said, at record pace, we're seeing that right now. It could cost them Tens of thousands? Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of, of thousands of dollars by doing it at this point? Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to guess at it. Look, we have some very sophisticated software that will really show you the best way to do it in your particular situation. Because what you have to consider with Social Security is the fact that it was never intended to be taxable, but it is up to 85% taxable now. And people don't even think about that, right? Yeah. Because yeah. we were told to defer all of our taxes in our 401ks and IRAs and so forth. So people have all these big IRAs and 401ks. And now what we're seeing is that people, when they retire, are taking money out of these plans. And now they're paying taxes up to 85% of their Social Security is taxable. And remember, the tax thresholds that were set um, were back in 1983 and 1993. In 1993, up to 85% of your benefit became taxable. And the income threshold they look at is $44,000 of provisional income, which includes 50% of your Social Security benefit. So the idea behind it back then was that wealthy people didn't need Social Security as much as others. Yes. Well, I get it theoretically. It makes sense, right? But let me ask you a question. Um, the $44,000 number that we're talking about, is that wealthy in today's dollars? Heck no. No, right? $44,000 including Social Security, half of it? No, it's not wealthy. Nobody considers that wealthy. You know, at least nobody in the Phoenix market, right? It's, it's, not, a, it's not a high income. It's because they never adjusted those numbers for inflation, okay? That number was set back in 1993 and has never been adjusted for inflation. In today's dollars, it's like $115,000 adjusted for inflation. And here's the point we're making. When Lindsey Graham and Bernie Sanders agree on something, I get scared. And what we've heard a couple months ago is that, once again, that same saying, higher income folks don't need Social Security yeah. is bad. And all that is is a dog whistle to say we're going to tax it more. 
And so when it comes time to whether you take your benefit early or late or who should take it early, you or your spouse, or if you're single, how should we do it? Here's the thing. It's way more way more complex than look, doing a break-even analysis of when, when you break even with taking it early or late. It's also about doing a tax analysis inside your social security to find out if it makes sense to do a tax plan. Maybe you do Roth conversions before you take social security, or if you've already filed, maybe it makes sense to, to, to just you know, pull the Band-Aid off we have three years left in the most efficient tax window in history. If you don't have a tax plan put together with your financial plan and your social security plan, you are on a three-legged stool with a missing leg. You have said this over and over again, that we are in that advantageous time that may never happen again. And we talk about, I want to play by the rules. Well, we know the rules now, and the rules are about to change after 2025. Yeah, and look, there is an argument that, hey, what if, what if they extend the tax cuts? Listen to this. They made these tax cuts during the greatest economy the world's ever seen, okay? The, the blind chicken could have made money back then, right? In 2016 and 17, the market was going through the roof. Economy was fantastic. We're not in that today. This is after COVID, right? Remember when they signed that into law, it was before COVID. We spent, what, $9 trillion on stimulus and yep. COVID. Social Security is scheduled to be defunct by the end of 2022 or 2032. Nine years left, according to current numbers. They're going to do something. They're going to go after the people that have done their job to put their money away in retirement plans like you have done. So don't waste time. Give us a call at 833-602-7526. Let us know if you want that absolutely free portfolio review. We'll look at your taxes, at your Social Security. What kind of risk are you taking? Click on that QR code as well. It'll make it super easy. But you have to take action. Get off that couch. Give us a call. Take action. Put it into your own hands. You can't claim ignorance anymore. You have to know what your money is going to do. You have to know what the rules are. And you have to know going forward that you have confidence in a plan that's going to work for you to carry you through the retirement that you want. Get your complimentary review right now. 833-602-7526. Wasting time will waste your money. Do it now. Thanks so much for being with us on Asset Preservation Hour with Stuart Willis. I'm Brad Johansson. We'll see you next time.